Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today we're doing one of my favorite things, which is building something. This package here was sent to me by Horticulture Lighting Group. It's one of their new Elite 360 kits, and we're gonna put this thing together, so let's do it. Most of the components inside this box have their own little box to keep them protected. These little brown boxes are the SSTX heat sinks. Then you've got a little baggie with hangers, fasteners, wire, and connectors in it. And inside this white box with the HLG logo, you'll find the quantum boards, waterproof covers, and thermal pads. We've also got an Inventronics 320 watt driver, an AC power cable, and this green chunk of aluminum that will serve as the base plate for the light. To build this light, the tools that I used were a number one and a number two Phillips screwdriver, a set of wire strippers, and some electrical tape. First, I'm going to mock everything up to make sure I understand what orientation the parts need to be in. Since the holes on the heat sinks, thermal pads, quantum boards, and waterproof covers are not symmetrical, everything has to be turned a certain way to make this kit work, so careful planning will pay off. The order of parts is heat sink, then thermal pad, then quantum board, then aluminum base, and finally the waterproof cover. Once I understood how everything lined up, I was ready to build this thing. The thermal pads are not adhesive really, but they are still kind of sticky and you wouldn't want to screw this part up because if you need to remove them to realign, you run the risk of damaging them or introducing bubbles. Note that the two holes on one side of the board and thermal pad are much closer to the edge than the two on the other side you've got to make sure that they're lined up the right way. I started by applying the thermal pad to the back side of one of my boards. I removed the protective film from one side of the pad and attached it using the holes as my guide. I missed my mark on my first try so I had to peel it and make a second attempt. The second try was bang on but when I removed the other side of the protective film I found that there were a number of bubbles between the board and the thermal pad. I fixed this by putting the protective film back on temporarily and using the clear cover as sort of a squeegee to push the air bubbles out. Much better. Now it's time to put the board on the heatsink. Again, the holes on the heatsink are not symmetrical so I made sure I took the time to get the pieces in the right orientation before attaching them together. In this kit there are three different types of screws. There are two large Phillips head screws that come with two nuts, and then there are eight pan head Phillips screws and 16 flat head screws that have a tapered head on them. The two large screws and nuts are used to fasten the driver down onto the base plate. The eight pan head screws are for attaching the boards down to the heat sinks, and the 16 tapered flat head screws are for fastening the clear covers, the base plate, and the heat sinks together. Once the boards were on the heat sinks, the next thing I did was toss the base plate on and get my DC wire in place. I ended up taking the chunk of black and red wire I got and cutting it right in half. I twisted the red and black together to make each wire easier to manage, then stripped them back and inserted them into the connectors, making sure there was adequate exposed copper inside the connector and no exposed copper outside of it. I also made sure that the wire I had just installed was tucked into the little slot that's cut into the base plate to prevent them from being pinched or damaged by the clear covers when they go on over top. As mentioned earlier, the screws that fasten the covers down to the whole assembly are the flathead Phillips screws with tapered heads. I tightened mine down pretty snug just to make sure that nothing would budge.
There are a couple small holes in the base plate that allow you to pass your wire through the plate and onto the other side on which the driver will sit, so I gave my wires another twist and sent them through, being very careful not to scrape them on their way through the hole. The next thing I tackled was the driver, starting with the AC side. Terminating the AC on this driver is just like terminating the AC on a Meanwell driver. HLG provides one of those LLT L20 3 pin connectors, which I'm a big fan of, and a 16 gauge AC cable in this kit. I had to cut and restrip the power leads from my driver and from the included AC power cable because they were too long. If you leave them long, the LLT cable gland will end up tightening down on these conductors and not on the thick black jacket, and you don't really want that. If you chop them so they're shorter, the gland will bite the black jacket instead and provide a ton more strain relief and waterproofing. The wire colors on both the driver and the AC cable were black, white, and green. Black is your AC hot, white is your AC neutral, and green is your AC ground. The screw terminal blocks inside the LLT L20 connector are color coded so you can match them up on either side. One terminal is black, one is silver, and one is copper, so I took the black wire from my driver and tied it to the black wire of my AC cable using the black screw terminal on either side of the LLT L20. Then I took the white wire from my driver and tied it to the white wire of my AC cable using the silver screw terminals on the connector, and finally I took the green wire of the driver and tied it to the green wire of the AC cable using the copper screw terminals on the connector. I snugged it up very tight and did a pull test on each wire just to make sure that it was fastened securely, and also checked to make sure that there was no exposed copper from any of the wires poking out. Alright, onto the DC side of the driver. The thick red and blue wires are my DC output positive and negative wires. I cut these down a little and put Wagos on them in preparation for tying them into my light wires. There's another bundle of smaller cables on this side of the driver that serve a number of different purposes. The pink and blue white cable are marked OTP positive and OTP negative. This stands for over temperature protection and you can use these two conductors to create a circuit with a special type of resistor that changes resistance with temperature called a thermistor. More specifically a negative temperature coefficient or NTC thermistor which decreases in resistance as temperature increases. You would place this thermistor anywhere you want to add temperature protection and then hook up the OTP circuit to either side of the thermistor. If you purchase the programming interface for this driver, you can use your computer to program the resistance at which you want your protection to kick in. So for example, you could attach a thermistor to one of your heat sinks and then set the driver to stop outputting power to your lights if your OTP circuit detects a resistance that's equal to or lower than what you've programmed. If you wanted to make sure that your heatsink never got any hotter than say 65 degrees Celsius, you'd have to figure out what resistance that would be on your thermistor and then use that as your value in programming. The black-white cable is an auxiliary power source that carries 12 volts and 200 milliamps of current. You could use this to power fans or additional circuitry if you needed to. The black-white is the positive wire of the aux power circuit and the negative uses the dim negative wire. Finally, you have your dim positive and dim negative wires which are purple and grey. These wires work similarly to the dimmer wires on Meanwell drivers and you can dim with resistance via a potentiometer or using 0 to 10 volts or pulse width modulation. The first iterations of this 360 Elite kit did not come with a pot but they're now shipping with a 50k ohm pot for dimming. Since I'm only going to be using the dim positive and dim negative wires, I'm just going to chop the stripped ends off the rest of the cables and then tape them back. I could also cap these other wires off somehow, but I'm trying to do this build with just the parts that came with it, so this'll do. With my prep work complete, I tracked down that pair of nuts and bolts to attach the driver to the base plate.
You just get the one zip tie in this kit, so you've got to make it count. Again, I wanted to try and build this using only the parts that are supplied with it, so you could, of course, dress this a little nicer if you use some more zip ties. I figured the best way to tie this all together would be to take each bundle of wires and cross it to the opposite side of the driver, and then tie it all together in the middle. I also included my red and black wires in this bundle. I cut and stripped my red and black wires to length, and then connected them up at the driver. These two quantum boards need to be wired in series on this driver, so the easiest way to do it is to take the positive red wire from one of the boards and connect it to the positive red wire of the driver. Then you take the negative black wire from the other board and connect it to the negative blue wire of the driver. And this will leave you with the positive red wire on one board and the negative black wire on the other board. So all you need to do for the last step is connect these two wires together and you've got yourself a series circuit. I know it's kind of weird connecting a positive to a negative, but that's just how it's done. Not much left to do at this point, I clipped the four hangers into place, and then plugged it in to test it. I did have a 50k ohm pot kicking around, so I hooked it up to test the dimming function. Like I said earlier, on a 50k ohm pot with this driver, the dimming doesn't really start until about halfway, which works out to be about 30 to 33k ohms. Okay, I'm going to split the video here. The next one is going to be a super quick one where we just go over some specs of the light and then we'll do some of our own electrical temperature and PPFD testing and we'll see you then. If you're looking for more DIY LED grow light content then please consider subscribing and we will keep it coming.